CataractCoach.com, resident case 200 evaluation. Let's give this young surgeon your best advice to improve. Now, you can see in that picture, there's going to be some minus prolapse. So surgeon sitting here superiorly, good draping, I like that. Speculum in a good position, eye in primary, making a paracentesis here with the left hand. And now, oh, just making a main incision just like that with the right hand with no fixation of the eye. That's okay. Here comes the viscoelastic now afterwards. You just got to be very careful in making that incision without viscoelastic in the eye or with an eye that already has a paracentesis that you don't want to lose chamber stability there. You don't want to have that AC collapse. Now, good looking Rex is here. Wow. We've sped the video up so we can get through it in just five minutes. That's a very nice looking Rex. For 200 cases, this is fantastic. Let's see the hydro dissection. Nice and easy. There's another one. A little bit more fluid, a little bit more. Get this thing to rotate. Come on, you say it with me. If it does not spin, you will not win. Where's the spin? Okay, let's find out. Looks like topic anesthesia, a little bit of patient eye movement there. Here comes the phaco probe. And chopper on the other hand. Looks like a Nagahara type chopper. And emulsifying some of that lens material. And now, okay, horizontal chop here. No, almost. Not exactly sure why we stopped there or paused. Let's find out together. Maybe there's something wrong with the tip. Maybe it's not aspirating. Maybe the machine gave an error. Let's see. All right, going back with the phaco probe again. And the chopper. Let's see again. And buzzing with the phaco probe. Chopper going around the lens equator. Horizontal chop. Very. For case 200, this is fantastic. This is really fantastic. Keep up the good work. I think you're doing a great job there. And so chopping technique looks great. Good. And there's the spinning. It does rotate, so... Another chop going in. You've got enough small pieces. Probably could just emulsify the rest of this. Fortunately, it's not too dense of a cataract there. And now, again, chopper going around the equator there, emulsifying this up. Yeah, just bring the pieces up. At this point, I don't think you really need to do any more chopping. You can just emulsify these pieces, bring them up. Everything should come up pretty easily. Again, it's not that dense of a cataract. And good incision there. I like how you're floating with the in, in the probe in the incision. That looks nice. Eye stays in primary throughout the case. You don't have to chase the eye around. That's good. Here comes the last of it. Looks great. I'd like to chop on the safe position just as the very last pieces come out just to keep the posterior capsule at bay. Now a little bit of just gentle aspiration. Probably no energy on that piece. Just a little aspiration. There we go. Getting it done. Oh, there's prolapse. Hey, let me tell you about our Cattle Coach Podcast. Top podcast on all of ophthalmology. It will make you more successful. If you're a young ophthalmologist and you want to be successful in your career, you got to listen to the podcast. It literally teaches you all of the secrets. An interview every week, just an hour a week, every Sunday, everywhere you find podcast services. Now, cortex removal is coming up pretty easy. Nicely done. Coaxial movement here. You could also use bimanual, obviously. I tend to use coaxial for most of my routine cases. I think it works very well. And now, look at that, stripping away that lens cortex. Look at the rexus. Now you can see it's a beautiful looking rexus. And, okay, a little bit of funny water on the cornea. There you go, squirting it at the end. A little bit of Irish prolapse there. So this could be... I think the incision looks pretty reasonable. Maybe it's a little short, but actually it looks pretty good. Maybe the incision is fine. It's just the patient tissue. Here comes the lens going in at the end of the case. Let's get this delivered nice and easy. Taking your time. Eye goes back to primary. Acrylic lens going in the bag. Yeah, the incision looks great. So I think the issue is patient's tissues there. And that Irish prolapse can certainly happen. I do like how that main incision has nicked the limbal blood vessels just barely. That's going to help it have great long-term sealing and stability. Getting those happens opened up. Look at that Rexus. For case 200, this is just fantastic. You're doing a beautiful job here. So my advice to you is when you make the main incision, fixate the eye with something. And you can also, if you're going to put viscoelastic anyway, why not after you make the para, put the viscoelastic, keep the AC stable, and then do that. Um, otherwise, gosh, your Rexus was beautiful. Your chop technique was good. You probably didn't need to do as many chops. Oh, Irish prolapse again. So again, in a case like this, we've had multiple issues of iris prolapse. You know what I tell you to do? Just put a suture in. You don't need the grief. Imagine post-op day one, and you see the iris poking out the incision. Wouldn't you hate it? That's going to be a little pathway for having infection going inside the eye. You don't want that. So again, I'd use the paracentesis right now. Sweep the iris back there via the para. Don't just push them. No, no, no. Don't push with the main incision. Okay, that's a little. You can put a, yeah, you, a little pinch of viscoelastic was placed there. You can do that too. I'd rather not have that viscoelastic in the eye, especially now. It's just floating around everywhere. You can try to flush it out through the para. But in a case like this, I think the better part of judgment for a young surgeon, you've only done 200 cases, do you want to see the arch prolapse tomorrow at the slit lamp on post-op day one? No, of course not. 
I would go ahead and put in the suture. Anyway, great case. Thank you for watching. Remember, check out that podcast, top podcast in all of ophthalmology.